This now happens to be one of the videos I initially had planned to work on earlier, but it is how it is. Anyway, today I'm going to take a look at a high-end gaming keyboard featuring mechanical silver switches. This particular keyboard goes by the name of Thermaltake Level 20 RGB. Now, if you have a good memory and happen to be familiar with Thermaltake's product lineup, you'll know that they also have a gaming mouse with the same name as this keyboard. But that's not what it's about today. The Level 20 RGB is available in three different versions in terms of switches. Cherry MX Blue, Razer Green, and what I have here, the so-called Cherry MX Speed Silver. In fact, this is the first time I'm ever testing a keyboard equipped with silver switches. By now, quite a few of you surely have already clicked away from this video after I mentioned the term high-end. Because yes, high-end usually implies high pricing, and it's no exception this time around. Like many other brands, Thermaltake decided to put their keyboard into the 145 US dollar price range, at least at the time of this video. So here's the question, what does today's model actually bring to the table? How is typing on such silver switches? What switches could you possibly compare silver ones with and at the end of the day is it even worth it picking up a top-of-the-line keyboard Included are 11 pretty red keycaps along with a keycap puller. A user guide has also been included and this time around we might even need it with so many features or rather customization options. More on that later. My first two impressions of this thing are, first of all, great build quality with a very thick aluminum top plate and secondly, no wrist rest. While I certainly cannot speak for everyone, it really bothers me that there's none included. It may not be a big deal for gaming, but if you're typing, and trust me, I type a lot, I sure do miss having a wrist rest. However, aesthetically speaking and quality-wise, the Level 20 RGB immediately manages to impress. A special feature, although one that quite a few keyboards offer nowadays, is lighting all around the keyboard. Even separating the left and right side is this eye-catchy LED stripe. Okay, when it comes to looks, we all have our opinions and tastes, so in the end it's just a matter of preference. We do get a pass-through on here though. On the top, on the side, we get one USB as well as one headphone port. Most of the time meaning we get one additional USB plug that needs to be connected to our system. Obviously, this also applies to that one 3.5mm audio plug. The cable therefore is pretty thick and as it is to expect, nicely sleeved. On the bottom of the keyboard, we get to see some rubber feet along with two stands. Now, what is there to say about these new Cherry MX Speed Silver switches for me? Well, the actuation point is at a low 1.2 millimeters, so in theory, this should create shorter reaction times. Honestly, I don't really have a say here, since I'm not even close to being a pro gamer of some sort, but I certainly can tell the actuation point is lower than with red or brown switches. It is noticeable. After all, with silver, you do activate the key 0.8 millimeters sooner than with red switches, for instance. But at an actuation force of 45 grams, the speed silver switches, judging by how they feel when typing, there's a strong similarity with red ones. Even the sound is quite similar, and this is how they sound like. On board also are dedicated media keys, from the usual browser, calculator, play, pause, etc. to all the way up to a volume wheel. Furthermore, there are dedicated keys, buttons for the so-called game mode, brightness, five levels, and of course a win-lock key. However, we can also easily lock the whole keyboard if we wish. That could come in handy if you have cats walking all over the keyboard while you get yourself something to drink. Just in case I haven't mentioned it yet, these MX Silver switches offer a 50 million keystroke lifespan. Obviously, such a high-end board also does come with an N key rollover, as well as a good amount of profiles. Today we are talking of six. What kind of customization options do we actually get? Right off the bat, I can let you know, the Level 20 RGB can be controlled perfectly with as well as without any kind of software. Almost no compromises needed to be made. 
With the software TTI Take Engine, we get a nice user-friendly user interface with all kinds of options. In a matter of seconds, we can individually control and set colors for each of the lighting zones. There's also no shortage of effects to choose from. Speed, brightness, as well as directions are also part of this tool. Aside from RGB, we do actually get more productive settings as well, like being able to reassign keys, record and set macros and whatnot. It's also worth mentioning that this keyboard or rather peripherals by Thermaltake in general is compatible with other Thermaltake products from a lighting point of view. As far as I know, the lighting can be synchronized with TT RGB Plus by TT Sync. In my opinion, a unneeded gimmick support for Amazon Alexa. From a technical standpoint, pretty cool, but not really something we need. But hey, no one's forcing you to use it. But there's a small thing I have to point out. I noticed that the colors and transitions of the LEDs look much smoother and prettier without the TTI Take engine running. So it seems there's still some work left to do for Thermal Take on a software or firmware level. But then again, that's complaining at a high level. What I'm seriously impressed with is the fact that almost every single customization that can be done with this software almost works just as well without any. Sure, you'll have to read through the user guide in order to get the hang of those key combinations, but except for super detailed color settings and mixing, this pretty much is the whole package. Almost no compromises. I haven't seen that done so well on any other keyboard yet. So my verdict here is, aside from the missing wrist rest, I'm actually super happy with the level 20 RGB. The typing feeling is great, reminds me a lot of red switches, just a little quicker. Besides typing feel and lighting, the overall quality does impress too. You quickly realize it's a more expensive keyboard you're working with. But now back to the question on whether or not a high-end keyboard actually is worth it. Well, the answer should be pretty obvious. For most of us, a top-of-the-line keyboard rarely brings that much more value to the table. Often it's just a matter of wanting to have the high-end product, and with that often comes better quality overall. Nonetheless, there certainly are differences noticeable between cheap, mid-range and expensive models. With a level 20 RGB, in my opinion, at a price of $145, Thermaltake has done most of it right. The biggest letdown for me personally is the lack of a wrist rest. Those however that don't necessarily need one or simply don't care, it's a keyboard well worth recommending. And I guess we've now come to the end of this video. Thanks a lot for watching guys.